Good morning. Welcome back. Not on the coast today. We are heading up onto Dartmoor. We've um, parked the car this morning in Oakhampton and yeah, heading up onto Dartmoor. Now, today's walk is a bit of a training walk for me. Um, I need to do some long distance walks this year in preparation for um, a challenge I've signed myself up to in September. I will be doing the Macmillan Jurassic Coast Mighty Hike. So I've got to do 26 miles. That will be the longest distance I would have ever walked in a day. So yeah, this year I need to up my distances um, so, <laughs> so I can complete that in September. To help me along with my training this year, what I'm gonna do is I've got this book, it's called Dartmoor 365. The principle of it is they've, Dartmoor was, when the book was written, 365 square miles. It's, it's not anymore, they've extended the boundary of the National Park. It's now 368 square miles. But when the book was written, yeah, 365. So they've split the moor into these 365 uh, square miles, overlaid that over the uh, National Park map. And then within each of the squares, there's a point of interest. So with what I'm gonna do throughout the year is plan some long distance walks and tick off some of these Dartmoor 365 squares. So today's walk may be slightly ambitious, I've gone for 15, 16 miles and I'm going to be taking in um, 12, 12 of these squares. So we've actually already done two, um, but I didn't want to do the introduction back there because it was in Oakhampton and um, yeah, there was houses around and people around. So anyway, I'll show you those couple of clips now from those two squares that we've already done. Okay, so this is A8, the Museum of Dartmoor Life. It is actually closed at the moment, which I knew it would be, but um, I thought it was worth coming to have a look at this one anyway, as I was in the area. Um, so up there you've got, in the courtyard, you've got a tea room and the entrance to the museum. First of the squares completed. Just a short distance from uh, Oakhampton Town Centre. Uh, yeah, we come to this A7 Oakhampton Castle. The castle was built very soon after the Norman uh, Conquest. It was ordered to be built by the first sheriff of Devon, and the uh, the walls facing us there date from around 1068. Now it's said that if you uh, wander around the grounds after midnight, you may come across Lady Howard's ghost. And she worked her way through husbands. Legend says that she murdered each one. She was condemned to ride out every night to Oakhampton Park and pick a blade of grass. Only once all the blades of grass had gone would she be freed from her punishment. The carriage that she rides is made of the bones of her murdered husbands and horses that draw it are headless, as is also the coachman. So this is A7, Oakhampton Castle. Anyway, right, that's the uh, two we've already done. I'll, I'll make sure I bring you with me now to do the uh, other ten, if we make it. We're just walking past Meldon Quarry now, um, and the next one we come to will be Meldon Viaduct, uh, not too far ahead of us now. It has been terrible weather the last few weeks, really wet, so I'm expecting when we get up onto the open moorland for it to be pretty wet underfoot. So, you know, I'm adaptable, the route can be cut short, we, we don't have to sort of uh, do all 12 today. I'll take you along for the ones that we get to see and uh, yeah if you would like to help me get to my uh, fundraising target for the Macmillan uh, Jurassic Coast Mighty Hike um, I'll put the uh, Just Given address up on the page now and I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you.
Uh, this is Meldon Viaduct. It was built in the 1870s to carry uh, the railway from Oakhampton to Tavistock. So that's where we're heading next, over towards Meldon Reservoir. And we're dropping down underneath Meldon Viaduct. And then we're going to follow the stream below it, which is the West Oakmont. And we're then going to follow that up towards Meldon Reservoir. It's probably an old lime kiln, I guess. So that's Meldon Reservoir. This is C6. Uh, Meldon Reservoir was completed in 1972. It was 200 meters long and uh, 44 meters high. So that's looking back towards Meldon Viaduct that we were across earlier. And then we've walked along the valley and then across the top of the dam here. Definitely a bit boggy here. The... So I'm just running parallel now to Redavan Brook. It's down in the valley here. Um, and then if we keep walking this way, uh, we hopefully <laughs> will find the next point of interest, which is Redavan Dip. It's absolutely beautiful up here. You know, a lot of people say Dartmoor is barren and featureless and miserable and it is <laughs> but it's also beautiful and rugged and unspoilt obviously it's not the landscape that it once was you know humans have impacted heavily on it it all was once a forest but it is still beautiful and it's local to where I am yeah I can come here and feel like I'm miles away from anywhere. And it's even brightening up a bit. Now, for any of you that don't know me or haven't seen any of my videos before, my name's Paul. I've got a channel called Pilgrim Paul. Predominantly, I've been walking the Southwest Coast Path over the last eight months. Um, so far, I've gone from Minehead to Newquay. I'll be picking up again once we've got longer days and nicer weather um, but yeah I also do come out on Dartmoor do some camping do some walking come out with my dog Monty if you're new then hi <laughs> welcome hope you enjoy the videos um, if you want to have a look at my coast path walks I'll put a link up on the screen now so this is Red of Brook, and I need to go just up here onto this sort of hill there where the falls are coming down and there should be redder than dip so i'm not sure the best route might go up up the hill there and cut across so try and find a way across this 
Let's try it here. Well, I dunked my foot. <laughs> Hopefully it stays dry. So this is C7, red of end dip. This used to supplement the water supply for Oakhampton. All right, we're heading over that way now. And we're looking for C8, Target Railway. Well, I said earlier that we go into the military firing ranges and some evidence here of it. I'll leave that alone, don't want to lose a finger. This ridge here straight ahead of us now, that is a dismantled military railway. Runs about, well the book says about a thousand yards down to where we were just a moment ago. This is C8 Target Railway. It's about 200 yards long and it was once used to pull military targets. Uh, there are two locomotives still in the engine shed but they are no longer in working condition. Okay, so the rifle butts are between here and Rao Tor. That's Rao Tor over there. So I presume, yeah, they would fire from there uh, over to the targets that were being dragged along on this railway line. This is where they have some of the targets hanging. Uh, you see all the different bullet holes here in this piece of metal. It's a good seven inches thick. And their gun in position um, is down there just below, just below Rautor. <clears throat> wow, that was really interesting. Never been. I've not been to any of this part of the moor. This is North Dartmoor. Um, I grew up in Plymouth. So when I was younger, I explored a lot of the South Moor. And now I live over on the East Moor, or just outside of the moor. Um, yeah, so the, the North Moor, not, not really being up to any of this part. But that was, yeah, really interesting. And if you're into your railways, uh, yeah, it's a good place to come and visit. Right, we got a start heading back down off some of this high ground now and uh, on to the next next point of interest <sighs> don't know how far we've got now i don't know how many we've done what have we done we've done the dartmoor museum mountain quarry the viaduct the reservoir red of end dip and the railway so what's that six possibly i'm sticking to my plan i've still got six to go what is it five to two now realistically unlikely to get another six in um, I started too late today, it was about 10 o'clock when I set off on the walk and uh, obviously doing the filming as well slows me down so that's fine, not in any rush to tick these off it's nice to enjoy them and appreciate them while I'm here especially because I've never never been to this part of the more like I said um, so yeah we'll just carry on, see how many we get and uh, we'll amend the route if needs be I've actually done seven, not six because I forgot Oakhampton Castle Right, I've had to change the route slightly. Um, we should have carried on going this way, down towards 
Oakhampton camp. What I've decided to do is come along the moor here and we're gonna miss Fitz as well and Cross for the moment. Um, it was quite a long way and then to come back to the next uh, point of interest. So I've, I've, I'm skipping that bit, going across the moor and we're gonna head straight to Culliver Steps. Right, so here I am down at Culliver Steps. I haven't found the steps yet, but I know I'm in the right place because this is the boundary stone that's mentioned in the book. And it's got the initials OPB on. OPB stands for Oakhampton Parish Boundary. That is on the west side of Culliver Steps. And it mentions two bridges, which I can see ahead of me here, and two sets of stepping stones. No, can't see any stepping stones there. I wonder if this is the track rather than a river. It might just be like that now because it's so wet. But I wonder if this is a, a man-made track. It certainly looks like it with the stones laid down there. So I wonder if this track would lead to the stepping stones. No, I'm not sure. Anyway, the weather has come in a bit now. I'm starting to get a bit rained on. So I'm going to carry on and we're going to head up, head up to those toys up there, up towards Bowstone. It's a bit disappointing that I, I'm not um, definite about finding it. Um, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure this is it. I'm in the right place, but I just can't quite put the picture of what's in the book to um, you know what I'm seeing on the ground here. Ah, right. I think I found them. They're going across to the other side there. They're definitely uh, steps rather than natural sort of rock placements. Um, just opposite the bridge I've just come across there. <laughs> I'm happy now, pretty certain that I found C9, Colour of Steps. This is C10, Irishman's War. The story is that in the year 1800, there was two men that wanted to section off a large part of the moor for their own financial benefit. And they hired a gang of Irish workers to, uh, to build the wall. And the local people uh, weren't too happy about this because it would really impact on their rights to graze or their ability to graze the moorland. So one night they uh, sabotaged the wall, rendering enough of it uh, useless. It was then abandoned and yeah, the Irishman's War is still here today. Weather's come in now, it's, the skies are quite dark. The odd bit of rain, wind's picked up. But it's still nice, still beautiful views. All of this is unexplored for me. But uh, yeah, that's the great thing about the Dartmoor 365 book is using that is going to sort of give me something to aim for, a reason to come out here and explore this. Right, we've just come down off the top of Bowstone and then we've come down here and this is the Nine Maidens, uh, also known as Seventeen Brothers. All that remains of a uh, Bronze Age burial site. Right, we just left the Nine Maidens stone circle. Met a nice couple up there and was chatting to them for a while, but I had to get moving again because it's really coming in dark. Um, we're dropping down now onto the Tarka Trail and we follow the Tarka Trail now back to Oakhampton to where the car is. And there's one more uh, point of interest to show you on the way, which is, uh, I think it's A9, crossing of the East Oakment. Hopefully when we get there, it'll still be light enough to show you around. Uh, if not, I'll see you back at the car. I'm walking parallel now to the East Oakland River, um, which flows into Oakhampton. Oakhampton has two rivers uh, which flow into it. We've got the East Oakland, which we're along now, and the West Oakland, which is the one we were at earlier, 
uh, over towards Melbourne Viaduct. Right, here we go, A9. <laughs> I apologise, it is pretty dark now. A30, the footbridge, the railway viaduct, not the one we were on earlier, this is a different one. And then there is a Ford, just the other side of the uh, viaduct there. And there are some stepping stones somewhere, but I can't see them at the minute. And it's too dark to stay here to look for them. But anyway, A9, that is our final, final square ticked off for today. How many did I get done? I think I was aiming for 12, but I got 11 done. I missed out. Fits as well and cross, but I'll come back and uh, get that another day. It's been a really good walk, but for a first day training for the Macmillan, Mighty hike, yeah, I think that's gone really well. My legs feel fine. I could carry on. I've been beaten by the light, really, not more than anything else. <sighs> right, back at the car. I just got some stats to give you. That was total 16.03 miles. I started walking at 10 o'clock this morning and it's quarter past five now. So seven hours, 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a shame really that it got so dark as it did really at the end because I wasn't able to show you the um, East Oakman crossing. Essentially what it was there within a space of 100 yards, there's five crossings across the East Oakman. I think you had the um, dual carriageway, the A30, the old viaduct for the train, uh, you had a footbridge, you had a Ford and you had some stepping stones. Um, yeah, really good day. I, you know, I've really enjoyed it. It's all new part of the more this for me, um, which like I said earlier, is the beauty of this book. It's getting me out to new places and helping me get the miles in ready for my Macmillan Mighty hike. Um, as I said earlier, if you would like to help me reach my uh, fundraising target for that event, I'll leave the link to my Just Given page below. Um, I need to raise a minimum of £250, um, but I have set my target at 300 because you know, it's, it is a really worthwhile cause, Macmillan Cancer Support. So if any of you would like to help me reach that target, then yeah, that's really, really appreciated. Um, and if you don't, then you just want to watch the video, then that's fine too. You know, that's great. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these uh, Dartmoor 365 walks over these sort of winter and spring months before I get back out on the coast path. Um, I'll be posting a lot of photos as I go. I'll be posting them on my Facebook page and on my Instagram. So if you want to come along and follow me on there, it'd be great as well. Um, but until the next one, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon.